untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a very evil red-green land destruction deck featuring Karn alongside Liquid Metal Coating, which is recently introduced through the retro artifacts from the Brothers War. Two-mana artifact can tap it, saying a target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. So by itself it seems like a relatively innocuous card, but it sets up some awesome synergies, such as maybe target the opponent's land with it. Now it's an artifact and we can destroy it with a two-mana Ancient Grudge and can also flash it back for just a single green to do it once again. And then there's also a Braid, which can destroy an artifact, or maybe deal 3 damage to a creature in case we didn't draw our Liquid Metal Coating. But the best synergy with Coating is undoubtedly the one alongside Karn, the Great Creator, which is quite well positioned just with his passive ability, saying activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control cannot be activated. So this can shut down a lot of artifacts from the Eggs Anvil combo deck. can also be useful against the Ashnot's Altar combo deck, which relies on an artifact to activate, and then can also shut down treasure tokens and blood tokens from the opponent. So Karn does a lot just with his passive ability. And then a plus one says until your next turn up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness each equal to its mana value. And as it turns out, lands have a mana value of zero. So if we first use coding on the opponent's land and then target it with Karn's plus one ability, it will die on the spot as the land becomes a zero zero creature and dies right away. So Karn plus coding can blow up an opposing land turn after turn just by using the plus one ability and then of course we can also find coding with Karn's minus two ability which lets us find an artifact from our sideboard or maybe even from exile if the opponent exiled one of our artifacts so we've got one coding in the sideboard and three copies in the main deck since we're very excited to just naturally draw coding additional copies of coding are still useful alongside Karn since the additional codings can maybe still target the opponent's lands and their upkeep the lands now become artifacts and they cannot tap for mana thanks to Karn's passive ability, so that can also shut down extra mana from the opponent and eventually choke them out with a plus one ability. And then besides fetching our liquid metal coating, Karn offers a ton of extra utility by grabbing other artifacts from our sideboard, including a Tormod Script and a Gravedigger's Cage as Graveyard Hate to stop opposing Graveyard combo decks. We've got a Defense Grid, another retro artifact, shines against control decks that rely on counter spells as their main form of interaction. As for two mana, we can now say each spell costs three generic mana more to cast except during its controller's turn. So counter spells will now be prohibitively expensive to cast. Then of course our one liquid metal coating, we've got Asika's Chariot, good in the more mid-rangey matchups as a way to make a few cat tokens maybe help protect Karn. And then we can also use Karn's plus one ability to animate our Asika's Chariot into a 4-4 creature if we'd like. We've got a Sky Sovereign console flagship, can deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters a battlefield or attacks with a crew cost of three. So it gives us a bit of removal and can also once again crew it with Karn using the plus one ability, turning it into a 5-5 until our next turn. And then last but not least, the God Pharaoh statue might be a bit overkill, but since we're on the land destruction plan, this could complement it nicely, saying spells your opponent's cast cost two generic mana more to cast. And at the beginning of our end step, the opponent also loses one more life. So this can completely shut the opponent out of the game, although Karn will usually already do that. And then going over the rest of our deck, we're still playing with Stone Rain, of course, to destroy target land at 3 mana, which we can cast as early as turn 2, thanks to our 8 1-mana Elves, Elvish Mystic and Lenore Elves, which are also very important in speeding up the process of getting Karn plus Coding in play, because the sooner we do, usually the better. The opponent's less likely to have already cast a bunch of spells. And then to make sure we can catch up with early creatures the opponent plays, we've got 4 copies of Strangle to deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker, especially useful against a Blue-Red Wizards deck, which has a lot of 3 toughness creatures, so we can maybe cheaply take them out and still add other permanents to the board thanks to our early acceleration. And then besides coding, we've got our Grudge and the Braid, and at 3 mana, the full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which we can also cast on turn 2 with a 1 mana Elf, and the sooner we get a Fable going, the better, as we start out with our Goblin Shaman that can make treasure tokens, which can also accelerate us. Then on the second chapter, we can discard up to 2 cards and then draw that many, so it can be useful in finding our key cards and maybe get rid of some extra Elves that we no longer need, and eventually transforms into a reflection of Kiki Jiki, which also has a few cool applications in this deck, such as 
may be copying a seasoned pyromancer which when it enters the battlefield lets us discard two cards and then draw two cards for each non-land discarded we get to make a 1-1 elemental token and that's another great way to refuel especially when empty-handed we simply get to draw two cards so our reflection being able to copy pyromancer can provide a ton of card advantage and then we also have two copies of thrak tusk which will gain five life when it enters and leave behind a 3-3 beast token when it leaves the battlefield which also includes when thrak tusk gets exiled so if we were to copy it with reflection of kiki jiki not only do we gain five life and get to attack for five but we're also left with a 3-3 beast token afterwards so a perfect way to stabilize against more aggressive decks which are usually the ones that can still cast enough spells before we take out all their lands to maybe get us in trouble so thrak tusk will be an excellent way to still stabilize and then our mana base also includes three copies of Den as another great way to quickly close out the game once we've taken out a few of the opponent's lands. And then we need quite a few red-green dual lands to make sure we can cast a turn one elf and still have double red for cards like Season Paramancer. So we've got a full set of Stomping Ground and Carpluzen Forest, Pathway times four as well. And then one Rockfall Veil can be a little awkward in your opening hand if you only have the two lands, but can still be useful mana fixing later. And then a couple basics and the channel lands for added interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing either Karn or Liquid Metal Coating. So it's not great yet, but we can set up an early Season Pyromancer, discarding Grudge to go digging. So we'll try it. And a turn two Fable could be nice, assuming Mystic survives. Harvester is fine. Play Fable. And then happy to discard Ancient Grudge. Maybe I'll land as well. Harvester deals with our Shaman. And what's the next play here? Tapped Blood Crypt. And Rampage to make a Sacrifice Mystic. So now I probably hang on to Grudge to discard with Paramancer to get a 1-1 one -one instead and just discard two lands. Find a Stone Rain. That could be good. And then wait on Paramancer for an extra turn. Even though Paramancer would maybe speed up the process of getting Karn in play. Another Harvester, we can maybe abraid. Okay, so we could already play Karn with Reflection to maybe block Harvester, although a removal spell can easily change that. So we might be better off playing a Pyromancer, discarding at least Ancient Grudge, and then we're going to be better set up to protect Karn with Reflection copying Pyromancer also being a nice sequence. Question is whether I discard a braid, hence maybe we do. So now Harvester probably kills Reflection, and we'll take it from there. Can keep up Ancient Grudge, although not enough to blow up all the blood tokens here. So a Reflection down. And points got their own fable. Now if we play Karn, we shut down the blood tokens and the treasure tokens from their shaman as well. So that seems good. And we'll get liquid metal coating, since we have grudge to go with it as well, in case our opponent still answers Karn somehow. Just gonna hang back, protect our planeswalker, and uh, yeah, hope to get our coding online. Chandra, that's fine. It's gonna plus for mana. Today's my lucky day. And Bone Crusher stomps Paramancer, can still double block the shaman. And our opponent won't be able to use a treasure because of Karn's passive. And then Coding can also target Chandra to take that out. Okay. 
So let's say we coding target Chandra, which we can ancient grudge. And then play a stone rain. And Karn could plus just so we don't put it in range of another stomp. And can plus on one of the opponent's tokens here as well to take those out. Now Liliana doesn't have any creatures for us to sacrifice, but can make us discard a Pyromancer, can still turn into two one ones, and a Braid was a nice draw. So how about we target Blood Crypt plus Karn to take it out, a Braid Reflection, and then we can deal with Liliana at a later point by making some one ones to pressure it onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this hand seems promising. Mystic into turn two Fable. What's our opponent up to? It's gonna be a tapped bridge, okay. So Karn can also prevent the opponent from uh, tapping it for mana as it's an artifact. And turn to automaton. Okay, so this Karn should be very effective. And uh, maybe one stomping ground can go. Tempted to keep all my removal. Find another Karn, so Shaman can attack. And then we can just plus Karn on the opponent's lands. Don't even need to get coding. And then cannot strangle the Automaton since we cannot pay for ward. But that's gonna happen soon enough. And her opponent explodes, yeah, I can believe it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems reasonable. Facing Kahira as companion, so could point towards a creatureless control deck. Sometimes it's an elementals deck. Hallowed Fountain points towards control. Eleanor Elves Eternal Late, although I think I still played here. Can help us pay for Sensor if we play Fable next turn. Can maybe play Karn on turn 3. And our opponent's gonna tap out for March so we can resolve Fable. Don't know if we'll need Strangle, although it does still hit Planeswalkers, which is not irrelevant. If our opponent plays a Narset here, we won't be able to use a second chapter. So that could be annoying. And yep, yeah, there it is. But we get to hit Narset, resolve Karn, which is still pretty good. So much commotion. I think I prefer it over killing Narset here. And we can grab a defense grid since we already have a coding in hand. Could have also just grabbed double coding. And then if they counter the first, we resolve the second. Now we can make them counter the defense grids. And Ancient Grudge is nice too. Step one might be kill Narsets. See if that works. Opponent cycle Shark Typhoon for two, so they can trade. That's fine. They might keep the shark to pressure Karn, but we have removal for it. And I'm fine with this trade. So we get to resolve our coding and start taking out the opponent's lands. Starting with our dual lands, I guess Hallowed Fountain. And we can still play a defense grid if we'd like. Alright, so we're going to take the opponent's lands out one by one, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha as companion. And we're not packing any early elves, but Stone Rain on three, double strangle to hit any creatures. 
and then Karn to get our coding engine online seems worth keeping and we'll go with a tapped stomping ground could also play den first in case we draw another one so we don't have to deal with tap lands but it's not going to be a huge problem with this curve and our opponent on wizard tribal here so happy to have double strangle stone rain can maybe hit their blue source although the red mana is still potentially more valuable now we could also just kill arcanist which could threaten to draw a bunch of cards if our opponent has a cantrip and then next turn play karn close call here whether or not we stone rain i think arcanist is just a little too scary to let the opponent untap with it even though there's a small chance our opponent's unable to cast their spells to begin with if we take out one of their lands iteration we're happy to see and our opponent had another blue source for consider so they're not adding any immediate pressure for Karn, which means we can play Karn. Now, opponent could still have some burn spells to finish it off if we minus two. So we have to think long and hard about what to get, although with an Ancient Grudge in hand, coding should still be very effective. So I think I'm okay getting it. Asika's Chariot, also reasonable. So we might see a Wizard into a Wizard's Lightning, or maybe the uh, sorcery speed burn spell to take out Karn. If they don't kill Karn, then Coding can start blowing up their lands one by one, and that's an easy way to win the game. All right, they have the mountain. Arcanist into maybe Wizard's Lightning. It's going to be a static discharge instead. Okay, so we can Coating and then Ancient Grudge Arcanists, and then start dealing with our lands later. And then we'll have Coding in play for Karn for next turn, and we can maybe Ancient Grudge alongside it. Yeah, that seems good. Could also Stone Rain, then, and then just play Coding, and then wait for next turn. But then we're not killing Arcanists, so... Take that out. And we can kill another creature with a Coding Ancient Grudge trick. Opponent animates then. Alright, pretty happy to see that. So our opponent will have a leftover 1-1. One, one. But we can kill then by just plussing Karn, which will now have a ton of loyalty. So won't be in as much danger of getting burnt out. And then Alanor Elves could help us play defense as well. So code the den on it. Play Elves. Opponent considers. Now we could still be in danger of like hasty Arcanists if the opponent has the uh, Reckless Charge. But it doesn't look like that's happening here. And then between blue and red mana, I think we take them off red mana so they cannot cast their burn spells as easily. Although by shutting off the blue, we shut off the card draw to find more lands potentially. Discharge for four. Steam vents untapped probably means they have another burn spell lined up. Well, doesn't look like it, so we can coat steam vents. Plus on it. Take that out. And then how about a Thraktusk instead of Stone Rain? Since our opponent can cast most of their spells regardless with three lines in play. And then next turn we can maybe take out two of their red sources. Symmetry Sage. Do we see a Reckless Charge? Nope. Balmor. And that's it. So now I'm also in favor of potentially getting Sky Sovereign to kill Balmor. And then we can still coding plus ancient grudge. And Thraktusk and the beast can crew Sky Sovereign and our opponent explodes, yeah. Code one of their lands, flashback ancient grudge could also take out Symmetry Sage with it. And then we're very far ahead. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, and seems promising. Early elves to speed up Karn, and then we can have a coding in play already by the time we play Karn, so we can immediately start taking out lands. Shambling Gas will likely kill an elf here, but not much we can do about it. And then next turn, with an elf in play, we can go elves plus coding. If not, then I might just go for elf, since we won't be able to play turn 3 Karn without it. Gas attacks may get sacrificed second main. Fable Passage is fine. Do we get to untap with our elves? Does not look like it. Fatal Push to take care of it. Okay, Ancient Grudge the draw. So if we play Coding now, next turn we could Ancient Grudge something and still play Lanor Elves, that seems good. Could also play Fable, but uh, taking out a land seems powerful. can also kill a creature if we can code it here and an Ancient Grudge. If our opponent were to play a Mayhem Devil, for instance. And there it is. So, lots on tap. Another Ancient Grudge is nice. Go to Devil. And Grudge it. Play Elves. And hopefully next turn Karn. Plus coding can start taking out the opponent's lanes. Although we essentially have four spot removal spells here with double ancient grudge. Eaten alive deals with elves. Once we play Karn, we also shut down the opponent's treasure tokens for what it's worth. And another fabled passage. And there's Oni Cult Anvil, which Karn also shuts down conveniently. So, if we can get Karn in play, it's not going to be too difficult to take over. A Braid also deals with Anvil, but Ancient Grudge can also destroy it here, so... Answers aplenty. How do we want to proceed? Could get the Fable in play, let the opponent keep Anvil for a turn, hope there's no Mayhem Devil. Although, even if there is, it's not a huge problem. It just means our opponent maybe gets to make a few more Construct Tokens in the meantime. So, I don't hate Flashback Ancient Grudge for now. And then I'll keep the Coding plus Ancient Grudge number 2 available. Don't know if I need to hit a land if there's a scary 4-drop our opponent could play. I think we can maybe wait and see what else they present. Epicure is fine. Opponent sacrifices Blood Token, discarding the Chaos Crafter. Okay, so their opponent's also playing white. And the Den of the Bugbear, I'm happy to kill end of turn here. Could also go after the opponent's creatures, so they cannot pressure Karn. Although, we'll be able to take care of those soon enough. So untap, still no Karn. I guess go for Fable now. And pass. And then if our Shaman gets to attack, we can play Karn. Coding, super backbreaking with a double Ancient Grudge. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems reasonable. Turn 1 Elf can set up turn 2 Fable. And then we have a Braid to go with Liquid Metal Coding. So maybe turn 3 we can blow up a land with that combo. Opponent with Chromatic Star, so an Eggs combo deck. So Karn is the card we really want to find here. I'll go for Fable, and that can give us a small mana boost in next turn as well. Can abrade the opponent's key cards like Anvil as well, so this should be a good matchup for us. Chromatic Sphere. And another Braid the draw, so a double Mystic can go. And there's Karn, so that's already a big win. 
So if I were to play Karn, I shut down the stars. Opponent could still play Anvil, but they're going to have a hard time completely comboing off. So I feel okay playing a Karn here. Alternatively, just go coding, code a land, a braid. And then the opponents can't really combo off next turn. So maybe this is the safer play. Opponent cycles through Star and Sphere. But I don't think they're ever going to get to 3 mana again. And yeah, Karn coming up here is going to be too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And is missing at turn 1 Elf, but I uh, don't think I can turn down Coding plus Grudge. And then uh, Karn to go with it as well. So if our opponent can resolve some early creatures, we could be in trouble still. Otherwise... Coating. Next turn we can Stone Rain as well if we'd like. And then if we can hit our fourth land, we can keep the opponent's lands in check. Okay, so Stone Rain is an option, Ancient Grudge is another. In case our opponent has a counter spell, we can still flash it back at least. Although Stone Rain's more mana efficient, although that also has a drawback of running into a counter spell. So I think Ancient Grudge is fine here, and uh, sure, I guess we'll uh, do it this way. Go for the blue mana. Opponent revitalizes in response. Well, I guess now we'll Stone Rain. Going for Pyromancer to ensure our land drop for Karn would have been reasonable too. But I don't think I'm going to pass up on a clean turn 3 Stone Rain. Opponent's missing blue now, so Karn's gonna resolve, and then I guess I'll target the land first. Go for the basic, in case your opponent had Planeswalker removal like Fateful Absence, they don't get priority back to respond. And then the Planes is more important in case the opponent has a Glacial Fortress. Jewelry Disruption coming into play tapped is nice to see. So, once again, take care of the blue mana. And yeah, our opponents sees the riding on the wall. They're gonna keep losing a land turn after turn, and eventually we can deploy some threats to close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has an early strangle, double stone rain, but we're missing coating or karn. We have an ancient grudge at the ready, so we have seven kind of exciting draw steps between coating and karn. And then early elf on turn one would be great too. What else? We could draw a fable in the meantime. So there might be enough here to keep. But uh, it may not work out and there's a turn one elf, so that's exciting. Can maybe set up turn two stone rain if there's no fatal push. And so far so good. Opponent red black. Maybe a stomp for the elves instead. And Grass Rampage. Fair enough. So, go to Replacement Elf. So now we're looking for Karn and Coding still. Harvester, we can maybe Strangle. And there's Fable as well. So, Strangle plus Stone Rain or Strangle plus Fable. I think I like Strangle, Stone Rain more. And then we'll hit the Haunted Ridge. Can deal with the creature lands later. Prevent the opponent from casting a Shieldred next turn, which we're not prepared to answer. Opponent sacrifices the Blood Token, discarding a land, so they're not lacking a lands in hand, it seems. Which means I may prioritize Fable over another Stone Rain. Yeah, we'll give that a shot. And then I guess we'll keep the Elvish Mystic untapped. 
could also consider using Ancient Grudge on the Blood Token, so Harvester can't be used as removal anymore. But for now we'll get to Fable going, maybe discard Grudge so we can still flash it back for value. Harvester attacks, that's interesting. I think we let that go. Don't think there's any sweepers or opponents likely to have, maybe like the three damage one. In which case I don't really care about taking three, but if they don't, we force them to either remove the Shaman or we can maybe attack with it. Croxa, I guess we'll discard Grudge now. I don't think I'm flashing it back on the blood token right now, or am I? We could find a coding and then it becomes much better. Yeah, I think we'll hang on to it for now. And then what to discard? Maybe a land can go. Pick up another one. And then we can attack. Stone Rain, play another Fable. That looks good. Start by attacking and see if our opponent has removal. So far, so good. Play our Fable. And Stone Rain Blood Crypt. So no escaped Crocs on next turn at least. Opponent's gonna cling to Dust's hitting Grudge. Alright, so now I regret not flashing it back on the Blood Token, but that's fine. So we're gonna get our Reflections soon. Still hoping for Karn more than anything else. Thranktus could also be good at this point. Stomp kills a Shaman. Harvester could take out another one. Opponent attacks instead. And Mystic the draw, so we'll discard and hope to find something more exciting. And then Karn shuts down the Blood Token, but they can still, of course, Harvester to kill Reflection. But I can get a Coding. But if Karn is dead, Coding also doesn't do much at the moment. And then I'll play it now. And then Reflection can block Harvester. And then I should put a stop on the opponent's upkeep so I can coat one of their lanes, which, while it doesn't take it out, will still prevent the opponent from tapping it for mana because of Karn. So unless they have any instants, that mana is going to go to waste for the turn. So I should have done that before they got a chance to play anything main phase. Alright, that worked. Opponent did not float any mana. So now our opponent essentially only has two mana to work with. Take that trade, protect Karn. And another Harvester, okay. So we get to untap with Karn plus coding and let the fun begin basically. So with another coding we can do the uh, coding their land trick again. So target the springs plus Karn. Opponent does have the Fatal Push, sadly. That's fine. So plus, and then upkeep, use a second coating. Could also use it on the Harvester, so it doesn't get a chance to take out Reflection. Maybe that's better. Keep Elvish Mystic back on defense. Sure, why not? So now Harvester cannot kill Reflection. Can only be used as a sorcery. And they won't be able to Croxa yet, so they're just going to play a Giant. Harvester attacks, can jump with the Elvish Mystic. And hope to draw something exciting to copy with the Reflection. Or I can minus get Isika's Chariot, and then use Coding times two, one on the Harvester, one on a land. And that should be decent. So upkeep stop, pass a turn, code rich so they cannot escape Croxa, and code harvester so they cannot take out reflection. Opponent also doesn't get to activate the blood tokens, so if they don't have any instants in hand the mana from ridge is going to go to waste. 
A stomp on Karn could be bad for us here, so that's something we don't want to see. And Code Harvester. Okay, opponent gets to play their spells now. Sends both creatures at Karn. So I can crew chariots and attempt to block Harvester, Fatal Push. So this seems fine. Block Harvester, Chump Giants. So we can animate Chariot to still attack. I guess it is legendary, so we won't be able to copy with Reflection. I'd forgotten about that interaction, but uh, triple coding means we can shut down all the opponent's lands. And then Chariot can play defense here to block Giants, so I guess Reflection can start attacking. Could keep land in hand. Case of another Fable making his discard. But I could use extra lands in case we find a Thraktusk and there's a chance our opponent has some uh, ways to make us discard. So all the opponent's lands are now artifacts. We'll trade. So our opponent's basically locked out of the game now with triple coding. And then now we can actually start taking out the opponent's lands one by one. And there we have it. So a very grindy game against Black-Red midrange. And even though we didn't actually take out the opponent's lands with Coding plus Karn, just the fact that we can upkeep, turn them into artifacts so they cannot tap for mana was good enough. So a lot of tricky and interesting lines you can take with this deck, but the power of Karn plus Coding is undeniable. So play with it while you can, since it may not be around forever. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.